from Scotland, bought some land for his family here because basically he wanted a spot to go hiking and fishing. So he built his family home here. Right after he built this house, he realized that all the best fishing and hiking out of the entire 6,000 acres that he had bought was on the other side of the canyon. So he decided to build a bridge simply to get to the other side. So it said that how this bridge was built was that he built the entire thing on this side, anchored it down, threw it into the river with a whole bunch of extra rope coming off of it. They had local teenagers climb down into the canyon and swim across the river, climb back up the other side with the loose rope, attach it to horses and then pull it nice and tight and then anchor it down over there. Alright, now the first bridge that he built here, the rope that he was using was this stuff right here. This is hemp rope, as you can tell, not very sturdy, but don't worry, this isn't the stuff we have out there today. Good. Uh, Alright, uh, now a bunch of people started showing up in his backyard uninvited because they had heard rumors of this giant bridge that had been built out here. And this made George Grant Mackay a not very happy man because he wanted this to be a private retreat for his family and all of a sudden there was a bunch of strangers picnicking in his backyard. So he decided to sell this portion of the land. He sold it to a man named Bruno Stelzer. And he's the guy who replaced this hemp rope with this thin steel cable and then started charging 10 cents admissions to come see the Capilano Suspension Bridge. This was in the year 1903. So that was actually worth a little bit of money back then. Uh, and it also makes Capilano Suspension Bridge Vancouver's oldest tourist attraction because it's been officially a tourist attraction now for 107 years. All right, now after Bruno Seltzer on the bridge, he sold it to a man named Edward Vaughn, who you can see down here. Edward Vaughn was a wealthy man involved with the logging industry during its heyday, so very wealthy man, very successful. The one problem with his life was that he was lonely. He had no wife, he had no kids. So on a trip to Victoria, he met this young woman sitting right next to him there, Lillette Rebecca. They fell in love and decided to get married. So the problem with this was that when they met, he was 48 years old, and she was only 19. So her mother, the severe looking woman down here next to all the sharp pointy objects, wasn't very happy about the idea of them getting married. So then he had to win over the mother as well. He did three things. First of all, he brought her to Capilano to be the very first manager here at the park, which she gladly accepted, but still wouldn't let them get married. So the next thing that he did was he built her a tea house. And he built her this tea house about 100 years ago. And you can actually see it if you look through the trees over there, the red roof. Uh, it is now our gift shop, so you're absolutely welcome to go exploring around there later on. But just to know, it is about 100 years old. It is the oldest property that we have here on site. Uh, but then the last thing that he did, because that still hadn't won her over, was he brought her flowers from all over the world. He sent out a bunch of his friends who travel all over the world for business purposes, got them to collect flowers and then bring them back here to the park so that she could plant them. And that finally won her over. She stopped and thought about it for a second and thought, okay, I know that he's 30 years older than my daughter, but he just gave me a job, built me a house, and brought me flowers from all over the world. He seems like a pretty good guy. All right, so they got married, and they had a dog. Their dog was named Brian. A few years after that, they had a son. And they named their son Brian after the dog. All right. Now, their family, they left and went back to Victoria, where Lillette was originally from. But they forgot to pack one thing, the mother. They left her all alone to manage the park by herself. But she wasn't alone for very long. Because that's when she met this young man right here, Mac McEachern. They fell in love and they got married. The reason why they kept their marriage secret was because he was about 30 years younger than she was. So after she had put Edward Mon through all that, he, she went and did the exact same thing. Now Mac McEachern, while he worked here in the park, he did two major things. First of all, he started advertising for the park. And he was advertising the park as the eighth wonder of the world. Which, as you guys can probably all guess, never caught on. But the other thing that he did was he introduced our First Nations theme. He had a friend named Chief Matthias Joe Capilano, who was brought out here to do carvings and dancing and teach people about West Coast First Nations culture.